Hello and welcome. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play more of our Europa Universalis 4 campaign in uh, Europa Universalis 4. That's 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 where the game is. It's located in Europa Universalis 4. I'm gonna see if I can say Europa Universalis 4 five times in the first 20 seconds of this video. So in the game Europa Universalis 4, that was the fifth time by the way. Uh, you are a world conqueror, um, genocidal maniac. Uh, that is that is the purpose of the game. Um, it's an excellent genocide simulator. Almost as good as Stellaris when it comes to purging. Um, I'm moving my microphone so it's gonna make weird noises. Um, it's rotating. I don't like it. The mic- the thing- the stop thing. Stop. Stay still. There we go. Okay. Now it's pointing in the right direction. It makes me feel comfortable. Anyway. Ming has the wound separatists. They've got the Liang separatists. Like, Ming is like really not looking good right now. And I think we need to- I think we need to attack Ming. I don't care if he has uh, 41,000 troops and we only have, uh, where, where, where are we at the top? We have, oh hey, we know about the Ottomans now. We only have 33,000. I don't care. I think we attack him. I think, I think now is the time to strike. So we're going to repay a loan, but then we're going to go up to full army maintenance. Let's scale back our corruption down to like half just in case. And uh, let's get in position. Park an army there. Um, and then we wait. We wait till he's a couple provinces away. Ming will cede land. He lost his war to Cardell. Holy crap. That's how scared he is right now. He had such an advantage. Well, I guess there goes that opportunity. I mean, eventually we're going to attack Cardell, but... Hey, man, when the Ming, when the tiger's weak, you got to attack the tiger. The nobility are now loyal again. We could call a diet, sack some prestige to get the manpower recovery speed up. The prestige is not tremendously valuable to us, and getting a discount on our maintenance would be nice. Recruiting a conquistador is, an, is a second chance at a good general who has some actual shock value. Um, albeit, conquistadors only have 80% of the normal amount of pips as a regular general, so... But still, I mean... I think we should do it, honestly, because it's going to be a while, five more years till we can hire another one here, and we have like really crappy army tradition anyway, so I'd say there's a pretty good chance something good comes from this. Let's do this. What do we get? We got a 3-3, three, a three, three. that's amazing! I want the siege guy though. We're just, we're just going to stay over the limit, I don't even care. Um, three out of two. You know, when we declare on Ming, we'll be fine. A 3-3, three, three, a 3-3-1-1 three, three, one, one Conquistador, that is sick. I love it. Let's put him in charge. And we've got a 3-Siege guy for, for forts. Things are looking solid right now. The merchant guilds are about to become happy. We could demand some administrative support from these clergy to, you know, piss them off. Native uprisings don't matter. We don't need the Inquisitor. We don't need any of this stuff. Um, I'm just excited for them to be back to happy again. I, I still would like to do the Grant New World Charter when we get the opportunity to, once their influence comes up. Their influence probably won't come up, though, unless I give them more land, and I'm not going to do that just yet. Part of the problem is that I keep on conquering land, but not, like, keeping any of it for myself, so we don't end up with land that's high autonomy that I want to give to estates. I'm, I'm, I'm really... This is turning into a vassal play game, and I like it. I'm excited for it. I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun to play this way. Let's tell our vassals to be allowed to attach to just this army down here. Hopefully, Oirat will join in. Korchin um, has decided that zero armies is the appropriate number of troops to have. Meanwhile, Brunei has six, but he's down here and he's only got a single ship, one, one transport, so he's not involved. Um, but yeah, I think as soon as we get this army here, we declare over Korchin's cores. We make the war goal Sisigar, probably. The terrain is all step. We want to have the vast majority of our troops in this area. So I think we bring you over to here. And this army is going to attach. And we're, we're really just keeping this army over here to make sure that the Oirat doesn't do anything stupid. Lose money to gain prestige. Yes, this will help us out in the, in the war. Prestige equals morale of armies. Sounds good. Meanwhile, we have seven whole spy efficiency here. Humiliate rival. 
core return is something that we can do as part of Humiliate Rival, but it's 100% cost. On the other hand, Reconquest is reduced cost, reduced aggressive expansion. So, why would we want to Humiliate Rival? I think I read about this. Doesn't Humiliate Rival automatically Humiliate Rival? Don't you automatically get the Humiliate bonus? In addition to whatever else you do? Is that how that works? Because if it's not how it works, then looking at it, I would rather just do this. Less aggressive expansion, reduced cost, easier to win the war. And there's lots of course. I mean... I'm gonna look this up real quick. One second. Bear with me. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. Uh, EU4. Uh, humiliate. Cast a spelly. It's called the Humiliate Rival. Humiliate. Humiliate. Rival. The wiki has not been updated. Awesome. Humiliate Rival. Nothing showing up. Wait, wait. Patch 1.17. Humiliate. Humiliate. Added Humiliate Rival Casus Belly, which will now always be available towards rival countries, allowing you to humiliate, show strength, release cores and countries, but not directly demand provinces. Okay, so not being able to directly demand provinces would mean that we couldn't release the other guy. So we're not going to... Yeah, we're not doing that. Anyway, um... No, no, no. We're not going to declare war on Corchin. That'd be stupid. Um, we're not at our force limit. That's one thing I want to rectify before we go into this war. We have room for 17 more troops. We're going to flood the field with infantry. Because we're still kind of... Kind of in debt, you know? Like, we kind of still have, like, some bankruptcy issue, potentially. Um, we could train troops in our vassals territory as well, so let's do that. We need three more. And look at that. Perfect. We had just enough money. So we'll wait three months. We'll get 17 more infantry. We're going to have a huge army of infantry up here. We don't have any infantry combat ability. I just... I just Infantry are cheap as dirt. And that's what I want. Hey, okay. I guess we're going to go take care of that for now. Didn't even realize that they were getting close. Japanese noble rebels in Suruga again. Suruga. Ugh. Do we have to do that thing where we park an army down there again? It's probably something we should do. Saruga is 3.4. We need 14 regiments. So annoying. Okay, we're not ready for our war with Ming yet. Besides, we gotta wait for these troops to train, so. Yeah, we gotta go deal with this. I don't wanna have Japanese noble rebels fire while we're in the middle of a war. And actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to leave just a single regiment here now. That is the attached to me army. Keep control of our vassal. And we'll make sure that all of our vassals know they are to be supportive. Support me. Do nothing of your own. You are done exploring. What did you find? You found... Nothing. <laughs> good good job <laughs> uh, okay the East Pacific go find something for crying out loud I mean there's the country the whole continent out there I know it Ilan Ha is marching to Tuan which is in Ming excellent cause problems for Ming it's great for me in the meantime, we will bring our transport fleet, control group now 2, up to here. We're going to temporarily bring down the rebellion chance for the Japanese nobles. And then, uh, keep on kind of formulating our, uh, our new infantry stacks. Excuse me? I came here, and you moved? Where are you going? 
Oh, are you trying to deal with rebels for me? He's actually trying to come over here to take this back. How nice of him. That's so cute. Uh, Saruga, we just go park that army down there for eight months. That's so cute of you. I mean, I, I appreciate the gesture. Suppose we could always dispatch one of our own. Hopefully the Hai Chi Separatists um, end up staying in Ming and they don't come back to our land. But I'm pretty sure there's more Hai Chi cores. There's one here, there's one here. There's a pretty good chance he's going to come back up into our land. So... We should park like a 15 stack over here. How's Ming looking? Ming is at 3,000 manpower, 36. They still have 43,000 troops. They're still on tech uh, 9. Have another province being occupied. You will come down there. Now again, I'd really prefer to not have to squash this these rebels. I'd rather that they stay in Ming. But, come on, let's be realistic. They're, they're going to come into our territory again. Worst case scenario for us would be if they moved here. Um, I think we just bring both armies over and we protect both provinces. Do you have a fort? How'd that happen? Oh, he does have a fort there. Oh, now they're actually sieging a fort. They're going to be here for a while. Okay, don't attach, don't attach, don't attach. We are at our force limit. We have room for two more boats. Some more barks. Wait, Diplotech? Uh, yeah, it's still far enough away. We'll build two more. Actually, don't do it that way. Why do you do it that way? That way is wrong. Do it this way. See? I can learn. So we're really infantry heavy right now. And that's okay. Hey, poor, poor uniforms right before a war with our, our arch nemesis. That's a great, great sign. I'll tell you what, for now, I'm going to ignore these rebels. Because we're going to let them... You know what, actually? Let's let them... I'm going to risk this. I'm going to risk this. This. Why do I keep saying this? Hey, more stability. I have a feeling. I Cross your fingers. I have a feeling they're going to fail this next dice roll. We're going to declare the war... And then we're going to assume control... Yes! We're going to assume control of their siege at 35%, and we're going to immediately have a fort sieged on Ming. And it's going to be awesome. Is this... No, it's not. Okay, well, whatever. We're going to declare over... Sisigar. And we're just going to do this. We're going to win. I have confidence. Attach to me, my friend. You go that way. The woods with a river, a 3-3-1. It's unfortunate. We have no general with better maneuver. But it's fine. We need to take control of that siege. If we could get an easy fort, that'd be awesome. And actually, we, put the, we should put the three siege guy in charge here. And have him just go join. The fight as well, so that we have a very good chance of getting the siege. He has a two siege leader as well. Okay, so we take care of the rebels, and at the same time, assume control of a nine siege progress siege on Ming. Which is glorious. It's a painful battle. With the crossing penalties and train and bad general and all that. Okay, uh, we leave behind the guy who's got three siege values, so that would be you get to leave. Come back to friendly territory to recover your troops. 42% chance we take the war goal. You guys have attached to me. Good work. We go for the Korchin Cores. Uh, starting with... Sisigar. 
I love when they're smart enough to just do what you tell them and stay attached to you. That is what they should do. Meanwhile, we should improve relations with our guy, because we like him. Also, meanwhile, we're at war with Ming. What am I thinking? We should probably have our navy, uh, you know, doing stuff. Let's move up there. And we've already got a fort. Excellent. We advance in a bit. These guys need some time to recover. They're pretty well damaged. So let's just take forward the uh, the non-damaged regiments. And the other guys can kind of hang out in our own territory, get full recovery. We work on Sisigar, and we're just going to try to take some of these forts over here. I'd love to get the three siege value guy onto this fort right away. Which is you. So why don't we detach one guy, and hey, Big Bertha just so happens to be here, and we just so happen to have six troops, which is perfect. But we could use some more reinforcement down there, so let's detach one infantry, and then just have some more troops adjacent to this province, in case we see the Ming 50 stack. Because you know there's a big stack out there, it's, it's a big deal. It's not like, it's, Ming is not going to be a pushover. Well, they might be. Naval superiority, um, I'd say is hugely in our favor. Let's go blockade their capital if we can. It's good that we've got a power projection that allows us to have our third leader. We've got these things done. These guys are recovering. You guys can uh, move down here. Our truce with Korchin is up, our vassal, so that makes no sense at all. You don't need to be there. Um, I think you come down this way. And you come over to here, and you come here and loot. You guys still need, like, two more months of recovery time before you're, you're battle ready. Our manpower's fine. He's already at medium enthusiasm, which is a great sign. Revolts in Ming, we're making gains, relative strength of the alliance. They desire to continue the war. Lower war enthusiasm means that they are more willing to accept peace officers. 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 Yes, peace officers. Just loot for now. Just loot for now. We could, we could recover a little bit slower while looting. That might not be a horrible idea. Let's just go ahead and do that. We'll only recover at 50% normal speed. Um, but at least we'll get some money for it. And... Uh, Look at that key separatists stack. Oh my gosh, the Ming plosion is beginning even harder than it did before. And his capital is accessible and blockadable to us, which means that we're going to get such easy war score against him. And somehow we are no longer above the limit. Great. Let's head over this way, and over to here. Actually, okay, if you're gonna go to there, you just join that army. You come down here, and you come down to Sisigar. This fort is holding up progress. But overall, I can't really complain. We've only been here for 135 days. Explore the Northwest Pacific. No, explore... Northwest Pacific. Whatever, just explore stuff! Find them! I almost feel bad, because like... Ming was supposed to be our France, right? Ming was supposed to be, like, the big challenge in this campaign, and if they're just gonna explode, or implode, or whatever the term would be, then that kind of defeats, takes away some of the fun of it, doesn't it? We have 14 war score. We got kicked out of Ming. Let's see what the peace deal that I want is going to cost me. I want all Korchin cores. 
We declared on a reconquest, so if we take his claim, it'll cost us diplo points, so we don't really want to take his claim. Um, I mean, the diplo point cost is minor. It's for development, so we'd pay like 12 dip. I guess we could pay for that. But what we, what we really want is we want to release Mongolia. And we will do that by taking the cheapest Mongolian province we can find, which is going to be Kerlin. So we need to siege that. Let's go siege that now. What? Massive high chi separatist rebellion right on top of our army. And we're already locked, so we've got to reinforce. That is such horrible timing. It's fine, though, because the Haichi rebels would have caused problems for me as well. You know, they would have finished up with Ming and then moved into my land. Alright, so leader with siege value goes down to the next fort. You go to here, you go to here. You go to Setsun. We take down this thing. Our glorious navy was attacked. That's not ideal. It's just too... Uh, okay. They should auto-retreat, right? Here, just go here for now. That'll be our mission. Colonize! Colonize the islands of the north. I think it's time we take a mission like that. Alright, if we finish the siege... Now we can take a look at what kind of a peace deal I want and how much it's going to cost. So I want all the Korchin cores. That's going to be all of this. Down to Chende. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then I want Curlin. That's going to cost us 52 dip. And the reason it's costing is because we don't have them occupied. So all we have to do is just get them occupied. So we keep on advancing in. War score cost is only 37, and that's probably it. We're not going to go for the Humiliate. As much as I love the Monarch points, I think we want a cheap war score so that we have another chance to attack Ming again soon. Let's go make sure that we're sieging down these cores then. Got this coastal fort blockaded. Level 3 siege advisor. 30 stack of key separatists moving on Beijing. Oh my god. Good luck, sir. Just pick something. I don't care. No! What are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing coming up here? Why am I fighting your 30 stack? That's bullshit. Why didn't you stay in Beijing? You bastards. What a bunch of jerks. That is not cool at all. That was a really expensive battle for me. And now there's the Min Separatists way up here. All right, let's 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 try to maybe take this a little bit slower. Is it low enthusiasm? Forty war score for this land plus that. Eighty-four dip. Why is it eighty-four dip? I'm confused. Oh, right, duh, I've got to transfer control. Derp, moron.
Now it's only six. Okay, so that gives one, two, three, four, five, six. Answered everything. And it's 40 war score. He's on low enthusiasm. It's actually only 35 war score this way. Six diplo points. And he's at negative 45 reasons. So. Finish this siege. I guess maybe we'll have to fight the Min Separatists, unfortunately. Um, we need to go for Beijing. If we can get to Beijing, I'll go to Beijing right now. I'm concerned about the 28 stack, though. Come on, how many times are you going to fail this siege here? Nineteen war score. So we have our ticking war score. Now the peace deal is only 30... 30. Why is it cheaper? It was 35 a, mom a moment ago. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. Well, whatever. It makes him more likely to say yes. Negative 15 reasons we've taken this this province. Which means that we can advance on Beijing with the three siege leader. We pile everyone down there onto Beijing. We hope that we don't fight the 28 stack. If we do, I think I'd prefer to have the army in the mountains. So let's um let's just move to the mountains there. And then hope that this army again doesn't get engaged by this. His capital is being occupied. We suffer the attrition because we can. It's not a big deal. And we just wait until he's willing to say yes, which honestly could happen any second. You know? One one battle making him lose some of his troops relative strength could could do it. It's either that or maybe he uh you know, we could we could try to blockade another fort. But with his primary navy being here, I, I'd rather just keep our, our whole navy together. Negative four reasons. Negative three. Get a renew alone. This video is getting a little bit long. I'm really hoping to wrap this episode up before uh, before we. You know, I'd I'd prefer to end the war in this episode so that I can. I'm gonna take a break from recording after this. So coming back in after having won a war would be better. There we go. We got the positive war. We got it. And we can take 33 ducats. I think we just take it just as it is. Mongol Separatists. Awesome. We do that. Done. Fortune gets big. We buck out. We get out of here. We head up to here. We head over to Oirat. And we immediately release Mongolia. And we have Mongol Pretenders. <laughs> of course. There's reasons. Now, Mongol separatists should want to defect us. In theory. And Mongolia has cores on everything else. So now we're at four out of four relations. And uh, things are looking pretty solid. Korchin has no more cores. So Korchin is ready to be... Oh, shit, they did. Did I miss... How did I... That's how it changed. I missed one. Crap. Should have known better. Oh well. We might just annex them anyway. In a few years. Right, okay. I'm gonna take a break here though. I'll see you again in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.